Hi folks, Scott here. Review guys, now I'm making this video right now. Uh, hopefully a Wednesday, and hopefully be, it'll be up uh, late Wednesday. My um, my computer is currently being uh, infected by malware or gremlins or Decepticons. I don't know, <laughs> but hopefully that will get. I uh, anticipate a few hours on the phone with the uh, technical support people, which is always a good time. But I'm going to talk now just to give some general thoughts on RAW and on NXT, which the the, the second episode uh, just aired last night. But I needed to tell you my exciting news. Uh, I, so I'm watching SmackDown. They had this. There, there's a radio station that has a Road to WrestleMania contest. Uh, if you call in, you'll be entered to win a thousand dollar prize pack, which I thought was a ticket a trip to WrestleMania. Wrong. It's just a lot of cool stuff. A thousand dollars worth of stuff. So anyway, I listened between two and three on Monday. I called in when I was told to call in, gave the name of the wrestler Batista, and I was entered to win the $1,000 prize pack. But I also won the $50 prize pack. And let me show you what I got, the $50 prize pack. I got coupons for hamburgers, but that's not, that's not. <laughs> that's like $40 right there. Okay, look what I got. I got this bag. There we go, see? WrestleMania bag. I got the WrestleMania hat. With a, with a little emblem thing on it. Which, do you take that off? I've seen kids who have that on. It reminds me of Mini Pearl. Do you know Mini Pearl? <laughs> it seems kind of tacky. And the WWE, the uh, WrestleMania t-shirt. I am very excited. And since my luck was so great, I decided I would press my WrestleMania luck. And I went and I bought the WWE magazine with the possible tickets inside free tickets to WrestleMania while I opened it up and guess what I saw? Tickets. I got these tickets for cheap subscriptions to the WWE magazine. I am a winner! I am a winner! <laughs> so, that's that. But I'm very excited. I'm, it's, it's my major reward. <laughs> if you've ever seen a Christmas story. Okay, so let's talk just generally, since it's later in the week, uh, therefore a uh, full-on review probably wouldn't be uh, as uh, pressing. So let's just talk about some stuff that happened in my reactions and I'd like to talk Smackdown and I would also like to talk John Morrison in a video very soon because I got his DVD and I want to talk about it and other stuff uh, surrounding that so hopefully I'll get back with you Friday night or over the weekend or something. So let's talk about Raw. What happened on Raw? A couple of things that stood out. Number one, Orton versus DiBiase. Bad, bad news, bad sign. I was talking with uh, uh, Slipknot RKO. My hair is uh, is acting. I'm, I'm going to get it cut soon. Uh, and uh, Slipknot RKO left a comment saying that he thought uh, Cody would eventually turn return uh, and side with Randy. And that's kind of what it looked like. They were playing it up until this past Monday. They were playing it like... Uh, Cody could go either way. Maybe he, you know, he's playing both sides of the fence, trying to find out who has the advantage, and he's going to join that side. And that sounded right, uh, but it also kind of sounded like, I also kind of felt like the, the face heel <clears throat> uh, um, balance, that Cody would, would side with whoever winds up being the face in this, uh, in, in this thing. Well, this week blew that all out of the water. Because it shows that DiBiase is indeed the heel figure, he, and 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 Randy is is playing very well. A um, he's the fan favorite in this matchup, but he is uh, still very, very not likable, <laughs> which is great. Uh, so yeah, so with Cody siding with DiBiase, to me it just makes the whole thing, you know. People were talking about a WrestleMania match, a triple threat. And I don't see that happening unless something crazy happens next week in the in the handicap match. But uh, to me, like I said, the fans love Orton. So if Orton wins, there's no great victory. And I feel like Rhodes and DiBiase are still just missing that spark. And it's that little spark that's going to make people care about their victory. And so, so Legacy wins. Eh. Orton wins. He doesn't need to win. He they love him already. So. That was bad news. Now, Bret Hart, John Cena. No, not John Cena, Vince McMahon. Uh, so what happened? Here's my theory. Now, don't tell anybody this. I, and I have, I've not, 
I'm just my, my mind. This is how my mind works. I didn't I didn't uh, hear this from anybody. I think Bret Hart and John Cena staged the accident. It's a ruse to lure Vince into the ring. Vince thinks he'll he, he thinks he'll go in and he'll just humiliate an injured Bret Hart. Well, we're going to find out. Maybe at WrestleMania, maybe before. Bret Hart's not really injured. He's going to kick Vince's Watch it. You just watch it. I'm just thinking. But the thing I gotta say about Bret Hart though, the emotion that he pours into every word he says, it's just so real feeling. Um, you know, I mean, if you read his book, or I read his book, and I felt like he really hadn't let go of, of stuff. And I just kind of get that feeling about the guy. Maybe he has since then. I don't know. But but he, I, I, I think he's really drawing on something very real and very hurt. Just my opinion. But uh, I, I love, I love what he, what he's doing. And uh, Vince is just. I almost, I almost felt uh, bad for uh, trying to get free tickets from the man who's being such a bad, bad man. <laughs> okay. Let's see what else happened. Okay. Uh, Shawn Michaels, now they open the show with uh, Triple H coming out and saying, I, you can win, you're, I believe in you, you're going to beat Undertaker and everything like that. My thing, though, was, I keep waiting, I was waiting for the Triple H, for something for the poo-poo to hit the fan with Triple H. And I thought this was it. I thought that he's going to turn on Shawn Michaels. Because something just seemed a little phony about the way he was over-complimenting Shawn. So, but that didn't happen, uh, because, except, uh, you know, Sean just didn't want to be comforted by Triple H, storms from the ring uh, after their loss, and then Triple H get, gets attacked by Sheamus. I don't care. I don't care about Sheamus. I'm, I would like for Sheamus to go back to FCW just for a little while, just to give us a little break, <laughs> and then maybe, maybe try again in a, in a couple months. But no, I guess we are going to get that Triple H uh, Sheamus match at WrestleMania, which, again, we're going to find out why Triple H uh, was attacked. Uh, but I have a feeling that Sheamus will deliver his lines poorly. I'm just saying, this is an idea. Okay, let's talk in the couple of minutes we have remaining. Let's talk about NXT. I liked NXT last week, and I liked it this week as well. I think they're falling short of their, you know, new uh, new form of entertainment. Hybrid wrestling and reality. I still think it looks like a wrestling show, and which is fine. Um, and I still feel, though, there are uh, too many kicks. It's the cuckoo clock. Too many kinks that are slowly being worked out. I wish they would have had it all put together uh, before they even started. For instance, a lot of people were saying, how do they pick a winner? Well, this week, they tell you how they pick a winner, but they didn't really tell you very well. Something about people voting for and against, I guess after every uh, show, the pros vote for the person, I guess, in that show who, who performed best. I don't know. One issue, though, that I see, uh, that I guess will be, it'll, it'll, it'll get better as time goes by, the idea of a of a rookie getting heat simply because of his association with the pro. For instance, David Otunga struck me as a jerk. I, I, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a good way, I guess. Uh, I am not going to be cheering for David Otunga. However, because he's with R-Truth, everybody loves him. Darren Young, I know he has the funny hair, but uh, he seemed likable enough. However, um, people don't like him because of his hair and because of the CM Punk connection. His match with Otunga last night was, um, he was doing everything a face needs to do <laughs> to, to get over as a face, to get people behind him not working. Every move against him cheered and hailed, oh, yippee, hooray, you got that horrible man. And then Otunga turns on truth, which this might be how this might be, you know, how Otunga will, 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 will get his heel heat after all. Uh, Daniel Bryan, I gotta say, oh, I got a question for you. Somebody tell me this. Thinking about Bryan, Danielson, Daniel Bryan, when was the last time, or when in recent history, let me say it that way, have the WWE allowed people to either A, wrestle under their real name, John Cena, or B, 
uh, keep their uh, their former ring name, their pre WWE ring name. When has that happened? In the past, uh, Elijah Burke and CM Punk come to mind, but uh, it's it's kind of odd to me that they are now taking that much control. I don't know. Anyway, uh, but I do like Daniel Bryan a lot. I really like this stuff that's going on with the Miz. Uh, let's see, Wade Barrett versus Daniel Bryan. Uh, let's see, let's see. Moving quickly, very, very quickly. Uh, oh, I love Skip Sheffield. I love the guy. Uh, yep, 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 what to do? <laughs> or whatever it was. But, uh, yeah, uh, I, I did like, I did like the fella. And I believe now my time is up. So, we will move on. Uh, I, like I say, hopefully we'll see you, uh, he, uh Heath Slater. Uh, over does it a little bit, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. Uh, see ya, hopefully this weekend for some Smackdown and or Morrison talk. So, adios.